right, testing one, two. Am I on the internet? Let's see. Oh, I forgot to put my contacts on. Oh, well. Loud and clear. There we go. Okay, good. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So... There we go. I have no no viewers? That can't be right. Okay, no, four. Okay, I was about to say, am I offline? <laughs> All right, what am I doing here? Let's move that down. Sorry, I am a little scattered. Because the clock got away from me. But uh, I'm really excited. Uh, welcome, everybody. Hey, Chris, how's it going? Oh, you still have mod powers. I, 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 I forgot that I did that the other day. I first saw the blue, I immediately thought Jason. <laughs> so, but yeah, man, I appreciate the help the other night. Um, so, uh, but yeah, my name is Kurt. I'm a comic book colorist. Welcome to my YouTube channel. And uh, this is, uh, this is uh, something a little different. I don't get to, uh, I don't get to do stuff like this too often. So when I do, uh, it's fun. Um, this is uh, a, uh, a drawing that's going to be used in a, uh, a big uh, con banner, one of those convention, I say banner, like wall thing, you know? And uh, it's this is uh, for Vault Comics, who um, has, uh, I've been working for now three, three years, four years, something, I don't know. The last couple of years all feel like one, <laughs> so, but yeah, uh, I've been with them for a while. Uh, I was very happy that they asked me to color this, um, this piece that, that brings together a bunch of, uh, of vault characters from all these different universes. Uh, and this is their first appearance as a, as a super group. Um, that's not official. I made that up completely. Um, but, uh, but wouldn't that be cool? Um, but no, um, but yeah, the, all these characters are, are from various vault titles. Uh, I think I know the names of most of them because I've done covers at least for a lot of these, but we've got, uh, We've got the lead from End After End and Barbaric and The Plot and uh, Hard Eyes and, and yeah, there's a bunch of stuff in here. We'll we'll talk about all that stuff as soon as we get to all these different people. So, um, and as always, if you guys have questions about anything, feel free to uh, fire away a little bit uh, later than usual. Uh, about 11 hours later than, <laughs> than usual. Little Shot would be a little confused about his job here, I think. Uh, he would be asking uh, inappropriate questions, probably, <laughs> for sure. So um, the only colors that you guys see on here now, other than this gray, uh, are, are sort of uh, are really close to what the rest of this banner is, is meant to look like, designed by uh, Mr. Tim Daniel, of course, who does all of their design work. Um, and I, I couldn't quite tell if it was a dark red or a black or what it was, but it's a dark color around the outside. Uh, I'm probably just going to make it black because I uh, I don't want it throwing throwing me off too much here with that deep, deep red and making the reds look weird. Reds look weird most of the time. So, um, but that's really the only thing that is, um, let's say, uh, kind of preset on this is to have uh, the real dark background. We'll color up this paper to look like paper, like they're busting out of it. Uh, and that background... Uh, will probably stay pretty simple. There's not a lot of it, and so you don't want to... Uh, I wouldn't want to start introducing a bunch of intricate stuff into the background because uh, it's intricate enough, <laughs> you know? But um, but anyway, uh, like I said, if you guys have questions, fire away, uh, and I will try to answer, uh, and I will also um, try to explain what I'm doing as I'm, as I'm doing it. So um, I'm going to start, where are we at with the layers here? So I'm going to start, let's check this. So the inks are on a transparent layer. We've got our base here. We've got our flats here. Uh, most of these colors should be pretty close to local colors. Um, in fact, I wonder if I shouldn't start from tweaking there. And then I actually want to try something first with this, because I don't really know if I know. 
I have a plan. I haven't tested it yet. So let's do that. Let's copy this to a new layer. And I don't want this to look like a fruit salad. And so obviously these care these colors will all tweak and bring them a little bit in closer in line with each other. But what I'm wondering is if I get something like uh, let me get something that's fast, big brush. And let's see. Let me get on a layer. Let's not mess that up. There we go. Oh, wait, that got copied. I got two reference layers, which I don't want. So let's select all that. I just want to see what this looks like. If I go like really red, like really red with all of like the shadows or reddish, uh, he'll be green actually. This is kind of a test of the of what I have intended, and this is uh, something like that. And let the red tie everything together because I want like, yeah, I think that's gonna work out really well. I mean, this looks ugly, but uh, my colors right now. But that was just a a rough, sketchy sketch. But yeah, we'll do something like that though. Ultimately. Uh, that's the off-white edges of the torn paper. Yeah, yeah, it is. And not all of these people do I uh, do I know. So I'm gonna I've got some reference from Tim somewhere. Maybe it's still in Discord. <laughs> uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Yeah. I should save that somewhere. There we go. Sorry, I'm moving some stuff around here so I can see my reference. Oh, I actually don't have reference for this top character. Hmm. And I, it's not a book I worked on either. I'm gonna I'm gonna message him and see uh, uh, where we got here. I need to know who this is. Uh, he swapped out Ninja for Scully, but yeah, I don't know who this is. We'll figure that out. We'll start with somebody who I definitely know who they are. <laughs> from uh, We've got the lead from Money Shot here. That one I know, because I colored that book. Realizing that this is, realizing from this that I need to read more vault books. Yeah, I agree. I, I concur 100%. <laughs> I, I saw a... Uh, did I color him the same color? Oh, no, I forgot. I'm starting from a different base. Um, I must have messed that up at some point. But uh, what were we talking about? Oh, yeah, we need to read more vault books. Yeah, absolutely. I, I saw uh, someone on Twitter describe them as the A24 of comic books. And if you know A24, like they're, they're a movie production or a movie studio or whatever, I don't know what they're called. Um, and uh, I think that's an excellent analogy. If you're into them then and their stuff, I think that's a really good uh, analogy. I think I said that already. Comparison is the word I'm looking for. <laughs> it's later than usual for me, all right? Uh, 
most of these I have I sent my flatter reference for most of this but um, but those are usually more like rough estimates so I lost the chat there there we go but hey everybody there, there, the chat is quiet tonight what are y'all doing what are y'all up to But yeah, at this point, I am um, just adjusting base colors. I'm probably going to be doing that for the first 20, 30 minutes, probably, to get through all these. And then uh, I'm guessing you won't see much of this, actually, that I'm doing. Not a lot. Well, it'll come through. I'm taking some guesses on some of these uh, on some of these outfits. If they're wrong, somebody will tell me. <laughs> Coloring. Oh, hey Ray, how's it going? Welcome. Uh, I was trying to organize brushes. I gave up after my PC locked up and undid all the work. Oh man, that sucks, dude. I am uh, I am sorry to hear that. I don't know what I am looking at here. I think my flatter didn't know either. Oh, that's her, like... That's her. Okay, I got you. I got what's going on. I'm I'm a pro. Uh, hey, love your stuff. Uh, hope we can work on something together someday. Yeah, it'd be cool. There'd be a lot of characters. You get references for them or make your own choices. Well, all of these characters are are established uh, already. Um, in in uh, in all of their respective books, um, and uh, so in this case, you know, I mean there are a few that I contributed to here on my own books. <laughs> uh, some of the idea I don't know if I had any. I don't remember. If, most of the time I. It depends on the book, whether <laughs> whether or not there's any. Uh, uh, whether the colors have been established or whether that's up to me. But in this case, these are all specific characters with, you know, that are established and they need to be recognizable, uh, you know, from their respective books. And so in this case, I've got some reference. I don't have all the reference yet, but I'll, uh, hopefully by the end of the stream, I'll have, <laughs> I'll have all of it. But the way I'm working, all these base colors are going to be very easy to change uh, if I do need to change anything. Uh, so uh, that'll be simple enough. The biggest thing here is just making sure that they all don't uh, flow into a big, you know, jumble, um, what they, which they look like currently. So one, one of the goals is to you know, from, from far away, if you're walking up to this banner and you're seeing it from 50 feet away, you should just see, you'll have the big, you'll have a big dark, uh, you know, vault logo on the dark background with them kind of cutting through. And so I, I do want there to be a sort of a strong, solid, uh, you know, to be like a red, real red, warm, uh, you know, color scheme that'll really stand out against that black. But then you can imagine coming closer, you know, to that um, banner you know, standing right at the table in front of it, I'm assuming you're going to see a lot of details. And from there, you you don't want it to all be a big red blob. You know, I, I want I want it to be, uh, let's be able to, you know, see all these different characters and point out some of your favorites and that kind of thing. But all have the, like having the shadows and having them all kind of tinted, you know, in a red direction will allow some of that local color to come through. Um, and then you get everything sort of separated and delineated or whatever. Um, that's the plan. <laughs> we'll see what happens. But, uh, 
Lots of characters, no blue flame. I, I guess not. He didn't make the cut. There's, they got a lot of books, man. <laughs> Probably couldn't fit them all on here uh, and have it still be uh, some kind of readable, you know? I tell you what, don't tell anybody. We're going to put a little blue flame. Like, just, we're going to... I'll find a spot. No one will know but us. There's just going to be a little... Don't We won't tell anybody. Somebody hold me to that at the end of this stream. Because <laughs> I actually want to do that. Uh, let's see. What am I doing here? Oh, this is... Oh, that's the rope that he wears around his neck. And, uh... House of the Nerd Show, welcome. Hey, Kurt, what's up? Seeing the announcement, you'll be in... You'll be the colorist on Nightfall. Looking forward to checking that out. Dude, I am so looking forward to that book. Um, the, um... It's a, it's, a, it's a double feature, so I'm coloring half of it, and Jason Wardy is coloring half of it. And uh, so I have to, like, up my game to match the Wardy-ness. His colors are amazing. I really like his work a lot. And uh, so I'm going to have to get better and try to keep up with him. <laughs> Everything's looking great. Uh, your day starts at 6. Hope everyone enjoys the lesson. Love you. Love you too, Mom. Yeah. Uh, thanks for coming by. Yeah, that is... that is. Uh, I, I am deep, deep in uh, sleep at 6 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Blue flame, please. Oh, dang. Tim heard me. <laughs> Oh man, I thought I was gonna get away with it. Now I am, Tim. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna find a little spot somewhere. <laughs> Someone, it's like one person at the show is gonna be like, what's that little blue flame there? Well, it's funny you should ask. <laughs> you know, here you go. Here, here's, here's, uh, here's the last couple issues. We'll make it a selling point. All right. Uh, well, since you're here, uh, I, I messaged you on Discord. I don't know who some of these people are. I still don't know who some of these people are. Uh, this person uh, with the purple hair, at least they're, well, the, my flatter made them purple. I don't know. Uh, the, the girl with the, uh, the Game of Thrones-ish looking shoulder pads. Um, I don't know what color she is or who she is. And uh, that's the only one I think that was different from the reference. Every, everybody else um, I have, I think. Please do. Whole family is watching. <laughs> Olivia and Elle say, uh, hey, well, uh, so so does your dad just like, you know, basically make you sit down and, and, and watch the weirdo colorist do stuff on, on YouTube? Is that what this is? No? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Adis Heathen. gonna google that <laughs> oh from Heath oh yeah let's see uh, images she's got a, sl a sideshow statue huh I didn't realize that is that the is this the same people yeah Vault Comics brand. Well, let's look at let's look at this. It's a little out of my price range, but uh, look at that. It's a pretty good reference right there. <laughs> I can't read all the books. No, that's awesome. Just make the shoulder mantle blue. <laughs> It'll be a blue flame Easter egg. There you go. All right, let's fix this uh, character up here. I said this might take 20 minutes. It might take 30. <laughs> There's so many characters. 
this, uh, I'm going to say, is this a record? But I don't think it is. Number of characters on the cover. A comic book cover, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. So, um, the other thing that, uh, what was I going to say? I can't remember what I was going to say. Um, is her hair? Yeah, it's like dark. So I get this question every now and then. When you have a character that has quote unquote black hair or, or just really dark hair and, uh, You can't just put black in there because then you lose all the contrast with the inks. Um, no number one that anything like gray or black or white or anything that's not very saturated at all is is easily shifted. Whatever the color of the light is, our skin, hair, all this stuff is very much like this. Uh, whatever color the light's hitting it, hitting it is, that's what color it's going to lean, you know. Uh, and it's going to lean there pretty easily because it doesn't have to swim through the saturation, you know, when you throw a color over another color. Um, I normally don't do a stream without having my handy-dandy color wheel open. But what I mean is dark hair or really anything that's, like I said, like that, you know, it's already going to start, let's say, be really desaturated. Uh, we don't really get value on this, but imagine it being darker. Well, if I shine a, a red light on it, it's so easy to pull that color across gray. You know, it's going to lean, it's going to definitely lean toward whatever color that your light is. But if you have a color that's already like in a that's already really saturated, and then you shine a red light on it, well, it's got to drag that all the way through here, you know, or all the way through here, however it gets there, whether it leans warm or leans cool. And so, a lot of times, a, a a color without a lot of saturation that gets pulled this way will just immediately lean toward that color. But if you've got a color that's already out here. It's going to pull just, you know, about as much. So it might pull you to here. And it's going to make the green thing look like it's got a red light on it. But it's going to be some color in the middle somewhere, you know. I don't know if that makes any sense or not. That's probably too thorough. <laughs> too much information for what I'm trying to explain. But, um, but basically, the more saturation you have, you can think about any color you shine on that, uh, you know, you're not going to see it as as intensely as you will uh, a really desaturated color or a really gray or, or black or whatever that kind of color. And of course, this is not like a rule. It's just I would say it's a guideline. <laughs> now I think I'm starting to under yeah my yeah my flatter just gave up on whatever I would have to. It's like what it's hard to. It's hard to tell when you don't know what to expect, what all these lines are, but she's got these like flowing things, and I think that's what that is. Or that is what that is. Yeah, and these little strips that I didn't know what those were either, but now I do. All right, so. Boy, these colors are really throwing me. I'm gonna change all of these for a second to something else. So I can see them. There we go. See how those grays all of a sudden popped against all those reds? All right. Where is that going? It's almost worse when it is. It's harder to see when the colors are there. I've learned this. <laughs> like sometimes like turning off uh, the colors. You can just see the lines. We'll start to make sense of what we're looking at. It's, it's a very cramped region without a lot of... I mean, it's not important from a art standpoint, but I do want to at least get it in the ballpark of right. 
Uh, let me go ahead and change this to brown. Where is brown? There we go. Res, magenta, pink, small. Yeah, yeah, we'll just, we'll make the whole thing um, lean that way. So this, sorry, I'm just trying to, I'm going to, I'm trying to figure out exactly where this stops and what needs to be what here. Tell you what, I don't think if I just do that. Still don't know the texture of this is totally different. I don't guess it really matters that much. I'll figure out what that is at some point. All right, and uh, this guy is actually that's his skin color. <laughs> In case you're wondering, why does that guy look orange? Dude is looks like uh, he's orange. It's like Fozzie the Bear was his dad so uh interesting most of my characters have black hair it's been a challenge usually comes out as black blobs on their head and it loses all fine detail yeah that's what i mean like you can't actually use black <laughs> you know unless it's in the inks that way um and that can make it a little bit easier but redacted computer hey how's it going he could be my next dnd character yeah yeah, that's the lead character from Barbaric. I've done a couple of those covers now. Uh, with uh, Derek Robertson, which is like a dream come true. Come on. May the color <laughs> gerbil of greatness make your night much better. Well, hey, I appreciate that. I guess. <laughs> All right. Hold on. I'm pulling up my reference again. All right. So this guy... I don't know how safe that purple is. It's pretty close. I'm going to brighten it up a little bit, though. Excuse me. I'm always... Uh, purples are weird, man. Not many of them want to print with very much saturation at all. And so... Um, as long as you stay, like... On the left half, <laughs> you're, you're, you're pretty good. Um... I'll show you what I mean here. Anybody that doesn't. I've got this. If you hit Control Shift Y, I think it is, with the color picker open in Photoshop, it'll toggle this. But see, like, there's purple, right? <laughs> so literally, like, this whole gray chunk is out of the CMYK color gamut. And so a saturated purple, strictly from a technical standpoint, um, you can't get too saturated with them. It doesn't mean that you can't make things look like they're per like they're saturated purple. That's just desaturate everything else. <laughs> There's the trick. 
just asking since I'm on CSP for the iPad. Uh, but when you fill solids, do you add an occlusion? Soft light, hard light, or do you first add? I, I don't, how I'll go ahead and tell you, I don't have that. Uh, I don't have like a thing on with shadows or with ambient inclusion. Like it depends on the line art. It depends on the project. Um, going to the level of like ambient occlusion is probably not something I've done a bunch of on like interiors. I, I can think of a few. Um, I can think of a few. Um, what do you call it? Um, co the covers that I did with Rebecca Isaac, some of those are pretty detailed. Um, oh, that's not black. Is that not black either? No. Okay. That makes so much more sense. Flatters. Don't use colors that are close to black. Please, pretty please. Because you can't see him. <laughs> like, I thought that whole character was lost. I'm like, man, Nate took a break on this one. Nope, it's all there. <laughs> Did I beat Stray? I did not. Not yet. We've had um, two streams so far. I don't know, probably close to f probably three and a half, four hours. I don't feel like I'm that far into the story, though. So, like, I, I don't know. I I've heard it's not very long. So, I don't expect it to take too much longer. Hey, Mr. Woods, how's it going? Thank you for your uh, membership, by the way. What a wild, awesome, intimidating piece. Yeah, yeah this is something. Um, and, uh, oh, yeah, I, I emailed you earlier today. How's it going? <laughs> uh, Tim Daniel, if you're watching. <laughs> but, uh, who Who is the, uh, the skeleton guy? The reference I have doesn't match <laughs> him either. This is, yeah, Tim, who did the design for the, not the drawing, but the design for the banner is actually here, or was earlier. Um, so, yeah, I don't even have to message him on Discord. I'm just going to ask. <laughs> and let's see. I don't know her name, but I know she's from Hard Eyes because I recognize Quests Aside. All right. Quest Aside, Vault Comics, Fantasy Comedy Series. Oh, funny. I I want to I want to read this too. Yeah, but I don't know if you were here earlier. Somebody's like, this piece makes me realize I should read more Vault books. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I I, I concur. What a great looking character. Mm, oh, you know what? That's an apron. That's a different color, and that's a different color. All right, we're not far away from starting, like, the rendering on this, so if you're one of those people that's, like, bored to death by uh, this stage, <laughs> that's, uh, we're getting there, guys. We're getting there. Um, do, 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 do. This 
this is not part of him, or does it need to be the same color? And uh, I'm guessing this is one of the hands from... Uh, I did a video, one of the covers. Now I can't think of it. <laughs> Lupe and Hard Eyes. Yeah, yeah, I knew it was Hard Eyes. I didn't know her name. A hard to get expression on a bare skull. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. I have a stray review. I mean, I'm I'm digging it. I mean, I like it. I mean, I I do wonder about like how much of these like eight, nine, ten star, you know, or you know, reviews, five star reviews, whatever that's coming out is just because of how cool it is to play as a cat. Like they've just they've nailed it. Like and if you if you ever have owned a cat or if you're a cat person or whatever, it's like these people know they know the cats. All right. They get them. <laughs> and uh I'm going to start with all of that being one color and then we'll end up changing it. Probably. Yeah, we'll worry about that one later. Um, it actually wasn't bad. What I what was there before. It like, it, it needs to be adjusted, but Let's go ahead and do that. Or at least just get it in the ballpark. I kind of like it all being uh slightly um like like it's 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 a it's the biggest thing on on the on the page basically as far as individually. And so I wouldn't want to uh like you really wouldn't want it to all be one big color and and so it's because I think it would it would distract too much, and so having having these big planes. I mean, obviously Nate knew this when he drew it, but having these planes and having them different colors inside and out and all that um, will uh, not it'll prevent it from being uh, uh, like visually distracting. I mean, um, all right. I think I think as far as base colors go, I think that is. I think I'm cool. Oh, that changed everybody's teeth. <laughs> All right. So eyes and teeth. Um, I'm going to make them all a uh, not quite white, not quite, not much saturation because one, we want to we want to leave enough room to get some highlights on there, but um, I don't recommend ever going straight to white. It's like one of those like just things that beginners love to do is just oh eyes are white and then go all the way to the corner and make them white. A lot of time that's going to really really stand out because um, I mean if that's like the overall base color, um, and if you don't know what color to make it anything again it's the same rule kind of with really dark hair anything really desaturated and white is completely desaturated uh, or anything close to that is really desaturated so going with like the ambient color of your environment will get you there you know if, if your room is overall cool lean them cool if it's overall warm lean them warm um if you're going for like realism of course if you're not more graphic do whatever you want but uh Anyway, but going back to Stray, uh, I, I really, really am enjoying myself in Stray. There's something very, uh, it's just chill, man. Like, it, it's, it's just a, it's, you know, it's a vibe, as the kids say. Like, and the story seems like, it's one of those where, like, oh, it's cutesy, it's going to be funny, and it's going to, and all of a sudden, you're just going to, like, smash you with the motion at some point. It's what I think's happened. That's what I'm expecting. 
Uh, should Olive and I play straight together? She's a mature 10 year old. I would, yeah, yeah, I, I, I would, yeah. I mean, like the scariest thing that happens, and this isn't really a spoiler, I don't, I don't think, but uh, well, it's not because it's immediate. But um, they're these little like creepy crawly things that like will chase you, and you can only run from them, like you know, so um, you can't really fight them. Um, and so they, they kind of swarm, and the screen gets red, and the music, you know, it, you know, it feels a little intense. Uh, you learn to hate those little things, is what you do. <laughs> But I mean, somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but I, I don't. I don't think there's anything that's too. Uh, I don't know. I mean, conceptually, I think it might be heavy. I mean, as far as like, you know, humanity and the world and what we're doing to it and all that, I think it might might be there. But um, Stray is a toned down version of Near uh, Auto Auto. Uh, I don't even know how to say that. It's very PG. Okay, there we go. Yeah, Dead House has played it. And I'm sorry I can't color and talk at the same time. <laughs> Still. All right. So, how do I want to do this? We can either... Paint everything red and then reveal the local color. Or I can add red shadows. <laughs> I'm trying to think of which way my brain wants to go with this. Because we can go either way. I think I actually want to start with everything having that red overlay and then we'll pull out as needed i think yeah no problem but yeah i love cats i love got two of them and i don't know if you've seen you know on the internet there's a lot of cats that are that are sort of enamored with this game <laughs> it's extremely realistic and like little subtle things that they do with animations. You know, if a cat's really high on something and it's coming down, I'll do like that one paw on the edge before it comes, you know, little things like that. Um, I don't want to say too much else about it because those little moments, there's a couple of, uh, there's more than a few little moments in it that are just, if you, if you know cats, are just, it's just hilarious. Um, but anyway, I think I'm going to, what, what did I just do there? Was there something on that layer? No. <laughs> Random layer. Um, let's do that. And... That. And you know what I'm going to do, actually? Because... I unfortunately, oh, this file is enormous. Good Lord. Okay, like no wonder that fill took a second. Um, I wanna look at all these reds in Photoshop because I don't trust Clip Studio uh, to give me good reds. Um, I also have to save this as a PSD file for that. <laughs> Not a Clip thing. If you're new here, Clip Studio does not have a proper CMYK support or a CMYK preview the way that um, the way that uh, Photoshop does. Do, 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 do. See what I mean? Like that, for example. Like, I know for a fact this skin is not going to happen. It actually looks like it It almost turns what appears to be green because it's so it's so much cooler than everything else. Um, so, yeah, if I actually want that... I, I mean, I am assuming a standard, like, CMYK print process here, but I, I, I don't... I don't even know if that's true. But yeah, reds are just, oh, reds suck in CMYK. Especially dark reds, which is like all this is. <laughs> like, I need these guys to look. Yes, more saturation. I keep wanting to push saturation. It is not, look at that. It, like, it is nowhere near red. 
It's weird to see if the SB doesn't have that. You're telling me. And I need to look at this. My other monitor also. I don't. I think this one. I haven't calibrated this one in a while, but I always always check what I'm doing on my other big monitor. I think we can actually go a little bit darker. Right about there, I think. All right, let's save. Save that. Oh, open it. Who went there? File is. I closed it. I thought I did. No, I didn't. I think CSP auto updates, but I'm opening it and closing it. Closing it and reopening it just in case. Darius, how's it going, man? Welcome. Thank you for your uh, membership. All right, so my theory is we're going to put a mask on this hard light layer. And I'm going to call this red. <laughs> and, uh,. So theoretically, I'm just kind of, again, I'm testing here for a second. How much do we want to push that? I think we want to leave this, we want to leave a lot of red on these. So yeah, I think that's going to be the right move. We'll see what happens. Doing well, enjoying summer and lots of art. Awesome. Brush, what is this brush doing? I'm so confused. Why is that not doing anything? Or maybe it was the brush I was using. Yeah, there we go. Is that orange thing an accessory for your pen, or is that what your pen looks like out of the box? No, no, it's a, it's a grip. It increases the, uh, the the width of the pen, so it's much much better on your, uh, on your on your hands and your grip to hold on to. Um. Like your your body sort of forms pathways, the things that you do often. If there's one thing you do all the time, then your body sort of becomes accustomed to that. And, you know, we're not completely symmetrical. Why is that? I'm so confused. Oh, because that ear was... Okay, never mind. <laughs> Why is the app doing the thing that I'm asking it to do? But, uh, but yeah, your body sort of gets really accustomed to... Uh, and, and forms, you know, basically what are like pathways through your muscle, through your fascia. And... Uh, so anything you can do to offset that or do the opposite or the inverse or whatever is really helpful. But it, it, this, uh, I really notice a huge difference in um, how much pressure I have to put on the, on the pin.
uh, are you using red as the color like the lighting? I'm using red as like uh, as basically a shadow or an ambient color, I guess, if you want to get technical about it. Um, but yeah, I'm basically like uh, revealing the local color a little bit. And uh, once once we're once I'm done, I'll also we'll do some a layer on top of this of another layer of lighting. But uh, this is basically going to be the uh, mid tones, I guess you could think of it that way. And plus, I think this is... I haven't done a whole lot of lasso-y stuff as much as I used to, so this will be cool to uh, get to do that. Crazy hot where I am, too, and some weird storms out of the blue. I have half a tree on my house at the moment. Do you have any damage? Yeah, it's been stupid hot. Stupid hot. I heard, um, especially in like the UK where they are not accustomed to this stuff, that the military base, that are the biggest military airport or one of the biggest military airports actually had to close because the runway was melting. <laughs> like what? Um... <laughs> Well, where can I find the official? This, uh, it says, it says Ergo on the side. That's probably not particularly helpful. Uh, but, um, let me see. Stylus Grip plus Ergo Grip for Apple Pencil. No, that's not it. That's the other one I've got. <laughs> uh, I'll have to see if I can find it. Sorry, guys. Give me one second here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, plus Ergo Grip for Wacom Pro and Grip Pen Stylus. It is expensive. I'm going to tell you, it is $30, but it's the only one that I have found that actually works. That's an affiliate link, so like I'll get a nickel or something if you use that link. <laughs> I don't know. It's not very much. I like Amazon sends me uh, affiliate checks of like 14 cents or something, you know, every quarter. So, but full disclosure, hashtag ad. So uh, right now I'm just uh, I'm I'm kind of doing a real uh, generic sort of light coming from the front ish sort of lighting setup here because uh, yeah there's no need for any like really strong uh, light source like that that. It's not gonna print, is it? Maybe it will. It's close. We'll check it later. I know it's my finger zaped, so it may help. Thank you. Yeah, and and that's one thing. Like, it's actually I'm 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 trying to figure out exactly how I'm gonna present this, but uh, I, I'm working on a on a story or on a on a uh, I, guess, I don't know if it's an essay or whatever, I don't know what you want to call it, but. Uh, I'm 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 in the initial planning stages of my own book, 
and it's going to focus on uh, at least partially on uh, how how our bodies are, are wired up and I, I'll say uh, I, I don't even think most doctors understand very well um, just how closely related and how closely tied everything is the body is to itself like I mean I've got I've had a tension issue it's been ongoing for about 18 months now and there are places that like my therapist will push on that like I'll feel in my throat and my heels at the same time <laughs> like there's only so much you know fascia in your body and so it's a closed system and uh, if you've got a something tight somewhere it's coming from somewhere else it's like it's taking that from somewhere else in your body so it's like your fingers are aching well it's like yeah your fingers are aching but it's because your forearms pulling on your fingers and your shoulders pulling on your chest and your chest is pulling on your core and like it's the whole chain has to be in action just to hold a pin you know and uh i've we, we don't think about that in those terms really enough in my opinion and uh Eastern medicine, Chinese figured this out uh, 2,000 years ago. I'm just learning that they were right. <laughs> like, they were just right about everything. But yeah, I have I have literally like freaked out to well established professional veteran massage therapist. Like <laughs> one I, I won't I won't say his name because I don't I, it's, this is the internet. But um but I've been hearing about this guy for years from all sorts of massage people. And they'll tell you, oh, this guy is a wizard, he's written books. You know, he's like, uh, um, you know, a guru, even among, you know, among his peers. He's one of those kind of people. And so when I started having some very unique issues, I'm like, let me go see this guy. Surely he's seen this before. And halfway through the, the massage, he stopped and he's like, I'm going to refund your money. I'm sorry, I can't help you. I don't understand what's happening here. <laughs> I'm like, uh, all right, well, it was a good massage. You didn't have to do that. I, I thought it was great. And he's like, he looked like he'd seen a ghost. But yeah, if you're one of those people that are sensitive to like, you know, uh, it depends on who you ask, what you call this stuff, like chi or energy or whatever. It's just tension. It, 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 that that word, energy or whatever, scares Western medicine, but it's just the tension from your body holding itself together. Um, and, um, but yeah, I honestly feel like I could write a book and, and like, uh, the, the medical community might take me out. <laughs> it's like, oh, wait a minute. He, he told everybody the secrets. <clears throat> uh, quick question. Some artists use gray in their inks, primarily as clouds in the sky or background effects. I found colors I use become muddy under gray inks. Um... Well, it depends on how you want to handle them. There's a lot of ways to handle them. Um, but, uh, yeah, if you, I have learned if you get under them, a lot of times, well, you do have to take a, take into account if you're going to color under them. You, you have to take into account how much the gray is shifting the color underneath. So, like, if you want a really dark blue or something, well a light blue under a dark shadow like might get you there you know what i mean 
Uh, I also tend to now with grays, if they're not on their own layer, um, I, I tend to uh, uh, color over the top uh, of those with like uh, an overlay or something, you know, or hard light or whatever makes sense for that. Um, Oh, I like that. Those are, that is vibrating as um, I've heard Marco Bucci explain it. <laughs> yeah, they're on opposite sides of the color wheel and that's most of it. Where is that white coming from? Is that in the inks layer? No. Is it in the base layer? Oh, I forgot to shrink the thing before I did that. Dang it. Let's see. How can I... I'll see if I can resolve this without redoing a bunch of stuff. I am so confused. Is that on that layer or not? Why isn't... Oh, because it's masked off. That's why. Dirt. Again, why is the app doing the thing that I asked it to do? <laughs> Come on, man. It never fails. If I'm like, oh, this app's being weird. I'm like, no, it's not. It's doing exactly what you asked it to do. But, uh, but yeah, to go back to your questions about, uh, what do you call it, about uh, grays. Yeah, like a lot of times I, I found it best to just work over the top and like an overlay layer and a hard light layer. If they're on a separate layer, that's easy. I'll use clipping mask. Like that's the easiest thing. Like, um, just clip a, a color layer to the washes and that, and, you know, that gives you a lot of flexibility. I wonder, I wonder if I know how, do we know how big this thing's going to be? We don't need AI to make art for us. We need it to recognize when we need something set a certain way and forget to do it. Exactly. We just need a we need a um, an app that just reads our minds. Like I don't understand what the problem is. <laughs> I, I I do wonder. It's it's kind of terrifying to me what's going on with like the dollies of the world and all of that. I'm, I'm sure you guys D A L L E. I'm sure you guys have seen, um, oh, I didn't realize I didn't do her hand. Um, what all that, 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 if you haven't looked, look it up. I mean, MKBHD did a good kind of explainer video on it. It's kind of insane. I mean, it's like, give me an impressionist painting in the style of Van Gogh, of a family sitting around a computer in the 1800s upset that they lost all their money in crypto. <laughs> and it's like, what you get out of it is insanely good. You just literally plain language tell the software what you want. And I'm like, this is like, it's insane. Like what it's really going to be, what it's good for already is like iterating you know what i mean because like that's always to me some of the toughest thing when somebody's like yeah hey, give me three or four ideas you know it's like that kind of technology is fantastic for that 
because it's going to do something you didn't expect almost every time. And it's scary. Like, it really is kind of insane, but there's no stopping that. Uh, it's, it's not like we're going to be able to, like, contain this. Um, but, yeah, like, it's kind of insane. Mid journey is ridiculous. Mid mid journey. I haven't seen that one. Oh yeah, I have seen that one. Yeah, like it's. I mean, uh, Boro Dante is is a uh, a YouTuber that I've been following for years, and he made a video a while back called "Digital Art Is Dead," and I'm like, whatever. This is a little, uh, you know. It's not <laughs> like I think he's right. Like in a way, um, I mean, it's not. It's not yet. Obviously, it's not yet. But we're on a freight train with no brakes headed there. Like, <laughs> I mean, so I don't know, man. It's it's weird. I don't know what to think about it. This is where following all of those crossfitters comes in handy. <laughs> but yeah, I'm I'm fascinated and and kind of terrified. <laughs> um but yeah, it's kind of why, I mean, I'm not losing sleep over anything, but it's kind of why I, like, I hesitated when I started putting out, like, the, uh, like, the caveman color theory videos, because I'm like, this could easily be weaponized, <laughs> and they, like, they already have. I mean, I'm, I'm not, like, egotistical enough to think that I broke new ground or anything there, but, uh. I, I do think there's a simplicity in like the math behind color theory that that I haven't quite figured out how to explain well enough yet. <laughs> but software like that is absolutely all those algorithms are there already. Like they, they already exist. But you're always going to need people. Uh, no, I'm not going to say always. For now, <laughs> you're still going to need people to run that stuff. So, who knows? It's doing weird stuff. Uh, yeah, it's because it's brown. I'm going to get under that base color and brighten that a little bit. And shift that a little bit. Yeah, I, yeah, that's going to be close to gray, but yeah, I, I, I don't want anything to come out gray necessarily here. I do think I'm gonna do a video pretty soon on like a couple of ways to know like if you're like over trusting of blending modes. Like I had somebody basically ask me that the other day. They were like, I've tried all the blending modes, I can't get the color that I want. <laughs> I'm like, wait a second, there's a problem here. That's when they become a crutch. You know what I mean? Like, that's when I'm like, well, just go to normal mode and pick the color you want. <laughs> like, don't, like, you're trying to force the software to do something for you. Like, just do it. If you know what you want. Probably going to get better results anyway. And 
and the further we get down this character, I'm not going to worry quite as much about uh, details. Because this is, I mean, there'll be details in here, but all this stuff is in between everything that everybody's going to be looking at. So, be a little, we can do a little bit rougher around the edges on some of this. Or not rough around the edges, but I'm not going to like spend as much time here as I did on her face, <laughs> for example. I think human art will maybe get more accessible and different because of Dolly. I don't think it'll replace ours. No, it won't. I mean, I, I'm being a little over dramatic here, probably, but yeah. No, it'll um, it'll it'll change things for sure. Figuring out how much it'll change and how it will change that'll that'll be an interesting discussion. Whoops. I don't think I don't know how long have I been doing this An hour? Yeah. I don't think I'll finish this tonight. I'm gonna probably have to finish this tomorrow. Cause this is I didn't I didn't realize how <laughs> this is super detailed. But uh, I'll definitely will go a few another couple hours here. We'll put a dent in it for sure. And shout out all these artists that drew all these characters. A lot, a lot of these are are, are, are you know poses and, and things that are taken from from covers and other projects and things. So I just recognized this from the first uh, Money Shot Number One cover. Because I colored that one. <laughs> Yeah, that was uh, Rebecca Isaacs. Yeah, that's not coming out the way I want either. Looking at Mid Journey right now, it's like reaching another universe and pulling back pictures. It it really does look like something from another planet. It might it might as well be. <laughs> Yeah, all that's all that technology is really very cool.
forget that I should be talking sometimes. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just get lost in here. Um, I'm kind of imagining this is a, a little bit more of a, a vinylish sort of texture. So it's a little bit uh, like the little specular highlights are a little bit smaller or th thinner might be a better word for it. I don't know. That's what I that's how I think about it anyway. Space vinyl. You're crushing this. Oh, it's early, man. It's early, but thank you. I appreciate that. Whoops, wrong layer. Yeah, I'm gonna have to change that. I told y'all red red is weird. <laughs> Banner, T-shirt, exclusive covers. There you go. Uh, do, do we know how big this thing is going to be? I was wondering about that earlier. Anytime I've got something round, bulbous or whatever, I like to switch to like a soft round brush and that way you don't have to uh, try to fake how smooth it is. Two eight by eight by eight panels. And so like eight by 16 feet <laughs> wow that's big I'm curious about something real quick I want to try I'm wondering nah, that'll be good yeah I'm gonna end up probably having to go back and re retweak some of these things once I see them all together but uh, yeah that's huge I think there's only one other time I can remember that I got to do well I, well it wasn't even my pro I didn't do the cover but I, I, the first time I ever saw my own book in, on a thing like that I was I don't know where it was it was Emerald City or or uh, Chicago one of the other they had a big image had a big booth and um, there was a uh, um, a glitter bomb cover that that uh, that was up there, and uh, it was Chicago, I think. But yeah, that was that was the first time I that had ever happened. That was so cool, <laughs> and I remember um, that was also one of the first times that I was like out at a big show, like after becoming a YouTuber, and so I actually had people like coming up to me, which it's funny when you're like. Us, I, I always think it's funny when there are people that are like low level celebrities amongst very specific crowds. Like I, I was watching, a, there's, a, there's a YouTube channel I, I follow for like tech news called Gamers Nexus. And uh, this guy, uh, of course, uh, I mean, they've got like a million, over a million subs and they've been around for years, um, do a lot of, uh, very cool uh, consumer protection type stuff, calling out companies for things they shouldn't be doing, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, you know, he can go anywhere in the world completely anonymously until he goes into like a trade show, you know, and all of a sudden, you know, everybody wants to talk to him. And so it was so funny to me that I just, I don't know why I didn't expect it when it happened, but it was so funny to me that when the first person that came up and they're like, 
are you are you that are you, are you the guy from YouTube? And I'm like, oh my god, I didn't realize. I really did not think about uh, the fact that anybody knew who I was. It was pretty fascinating. You know, me and Taylor Swift. You know, it's it's just how it is. <laughs> Same problems, basically. Larry Elmore, Jeff Easley, love the old D&D uh, &D manuals. Yeah, all that stuff is cool. I want to cut some, like, sharpish-looking stuff in here. Make this thing look like it's like it could kill you. I can't remember the axe's name. I've read the book. I haven't. I haven't uh, read the latest one, but I can't remember the axe's name. But if you haven't read uh, *Barbaric*, it's very. It's very good. That's what this character's from. Axe, his name is Axe. Of course his name is Axe. hilarious brought up on Dungeons and Dragons books man Dungeons and Dragons was not allowed I lived in a place well still do I guess but <laughs> I was not well no the, 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 the town I grew up in well, I had a little bit more of that than where I live here but uh, yeah that was it was the full on satanic panic we're all going to hell for playing that card game <laughs> go next let's keep on going in here but yeah so I didn't I didn't know anybody that played any tabletop games like it was just there were no I just don't remember there even being anybody that played and maybe uh, it's probably didn't Yeah, you were fortunate and stubborn. Tennessee, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's basically this, uh, very, very similar. High, high, uh, well, we actually have more churches per capita, I think, than any state. So I don't know if you've got us beat there, but it's close. I'm guessing you're in the top five. <laughs> I've still never I guess I've never I still have not played D&D &D yet the only the only chance that I've had as like with people that I actually know, like in person and not over the internet, um, my barber like r like randomly asked me if I played. I'm like, I don't, but I wouldn't mind trying. And, and they were, they had a group, but it was like, it was right as COVID was going on, I guess. And, and they ended up sort of falling, falling apart. But uh, he did tell me that he would let me know if they'd kick him back up again. But I, I need to get into like an internet group and um, which I guess is just a group. 
<laughs> but I need to, I need to do that. I, my wife would say I need the social activity anyway. <laughs> hey, Aqua, how's it going? Thank you for your uh, membership too, by the way. That's not even darker, is it? <laughs> I'm on the wrong layer. That's why. It's still not darker though, is it? Mm -mm. I'm gonna have to go darker on the hair and lighter on this, I think. Or no, which way do I wanna do this? I should probably just get a brighter color. Oh, I gotta invert that. Sorry, I messed I've messed up my selections over here. <laughs> there we go. That was the biggest draw to D&D, the social aspect, just hang with friends, go on an adventure, laugh about it later. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it would be fun. I need to get into that, like, D&D uh, &D character commission game. <laughs> I, like, I think that would be so much fun. I, I know, like, there, like that is a constant uh, source of, of uh, like, people are always looking for characters to get drawn. <laughs> So like, I would love to try that. I, I, I did one years ago for uh, Teeny Howard, just for the fun of it. Painted it in Procreate, I think it was. And that was super fun. What was the name of that? How long ago was that? I have no sense of time anymore, I don't think. <laughs> but I just realized I hadn't, uh, let's see, where? Oh, it had a, what was the name? Oh, that's gonna bug me. Rowena. There we go. I've got some problems with this now, looking back on it, but as a as what was a, I wasn't doing a whole lot of painting back then, but I need I need to get into need to get back into that. And if I can ever get my uh, schedule back on track, I'm gonna start bugging Tim to, to draw some covers. <laughs> If you're just joining, Tim Daniel from Vault is probably still in here. <laughs> D and D commissions are so fun. That's what that's what I'm thinking. Cool characters and like so much flexibility, creativity, all that stuff. Heard that? Yeah. Well, there you go. You you saw my you you saw that was an old one, but. But I'm actually my my first cover that I've drawn is going to be in um it, it's one of the end after end variants. Uh, it's a retailer exclusive variant. I don't uh but I'm I'm excited on to get a copy of that.
keep seeing little things that I want to adjust. I'm probably getting ahead of myself, but I'm cool with that. <laughs> that teeny piece was awesome. Thank you, thank you. And uh, one of the easiest ways to, uh, well, I'll give you guys some coloring information every now and then. <laughs> but one of the easiest ways to, to shift up the texture, if you want to make something look like it's a certain texture, is just change up your, your specular highlights. Like that's really what, um, that's really what, uh, makes something look like that it is shinier or, or duller or whatever. Um, whoops, wrong layer. And if you're wondering, why do I sometimes do use a lasso? And why do I sometimes use a, a brush? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, it, like, it feels like this should be brushed in. Like, he's a big, uh, craggy faced man. I don't want it to look too clean, you know? Such a great face. Uh, I also came to stream to say I've grown so much as an artist thanks to your videos. That's, that's awesome. And uh, great to come back to your streams uh, when I have strayed from the one true path of contrast. Yeah, I, I I thought it was funny the other day. You know, we've joked. Chris uh, Chris Brooks is in here has joked often about how we have the uh, uh, the the what did he call it the the church of of hard light. Uh, but the other day on Twitter, uh, Chris uh, Sheehan Sheehan, I don't know how you say his name honestly, but um, he had he had uh, he said something about. Um, What did, how did he put it? He's like, if I had to join a, a church based on one like digital art trick, that it would be gradient maps. <laughs> and then I was like, well, that's funny. And then he said he learned it from my channel. And it's still insane to me that uh, these like really good artists that I really respect come back and tell me later, like, oh, I learned something from you six years ago. Praise hard light. There you go. <laughs> but as soon as he said that about the gradient maps, like we already have the church of hard light uh, over here, so he's behind there. But um, good stuff. And I love this brush, by the way. I, this is like my favorite brush. It's a pencil, technically, but it's it's Ron Ron Chan's Gumroad free pencil. Um, it's it, like it works so well with tilt that you I have like I actually have I've not found brushes that work very well with tilt a lot and this seems like it's it works so well and so realistically <laughs> that uh I'm like, boy, I, I, you really have to like be very conscious of like what, what angle you're drawing at, and you know, like I'm kind of wanting this fall off, you know, as as the as the pencil sort of, you know, like if you get really close, you can see like it's got, uh, you know, it's got that little bit of fall off from going this way, but if you turn it, of course, it goes the other way. So like it's it's very very specific and and strong on the uh, tilt front but there's not a lot you can't cheat with it <laughs> you cannot cheat with it trying to make his arm look as big as possible <laughs> so we're getting there I'm also probably about to start doing at least some like fun streams with uh, like fresco doing some drawing or something Adobe fresco I had a big major update recently and that app has improved a lot since the last time that I tried it at least 
So uh, the live watercolor and stuff that it does, uh, running water, like it's it's insane how uh, how realistic it is. Like there's stuff that I would swear was traditional, like real watercolor. Um, and so I'm looking forward to checking that out too. Third time I hear about gradient maps today. <laughs> There, I've I've used them on a lot of I've started using them on on uh, uh, I'm using more of them on um, what is the name of this book um, the oddly pedestrian life of Christopher Chaos <laughs> that one um, I wanted to say the whole thing and uh, but anyway I've I've been using some gradient maps to like tie uh, just to tie things together a little bit a little bit and it's like I, I actually wasn't doing that until i saw chris's tweet and it kind of reminded me i'm like oh yeah there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with gradient maps that i've been doing um so um but yeah i've been i've been trying to mix them in more fresco is definitely more capable now yeah it's it it seems to be more capable than photoshop which i think is hilarious <laughs> Tilt doesn't seem to be working for you. Uh, oh, I don't know. There's probably a good bit to troubleshoot there. <laughs> good luck. Does your tablet support tilt i know that's a very obvious question but i used to do text ports so you got to start with you know have you tried turning it off and on again gonna be like half done maybe tonight maybe more than that we're, an hour, we're only an hour and a half in we should be maybe i can you know what i'm gonna take a quick break right now just a few minutes stretch you sharp you probably should too <laughs> that's probably too long of a stretch without a, without uh of a, without a stretch no pun intended but uh, i'm gonna refill my water um take a lap <laughs> around the house and uh i will i will be right back um, let's fit that to the screen. And after these messages, we'll be right back. If you know what that's from, put it in the chat. I'm going to see how old you are. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, this was a happy surprise. After a long work, always love your work. Inspirational, informative, falling asleep in my chair. Look forward to the next stream. Good night. Yeah, thanks, Douglas. Thanks for coming by. 
Uh, I hate Photoshop. I would it would constantly crash and move to CSP, so it's a blessing. Yeah, I, I there's a there's a big pro colors Discord I joined not too long ago, and they were talking about they're like, oh, the new Photoshop update did this and crashed this, and I'm like, look, children. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I didn't say that. But no, uh, if if the, the problem is, is they updated it. I'm like, I don't know why, know why you would ever want to do that with a new update with Photoshop on uh, on a program that uh, you have to use every day. So uh, if it's working, here's here's my uh, advice, which many of you probably know. If it's working, leave it alone. Don't update it. Don't update Photoshop. Don't edit, don't update Wacom drivers. Um, and um, don't do any Windows updates unless you have to. <laughs> But no, Photoshop should never, if it's working, you remember those old commercials, leave it alone, don't touch it, tell an adult. Yeah, <laughs> just leave it alone. <clears throat> and if you try to change both at the same time, as I, as I said, uh, it opens up a portal into the netherworld. Uh, actually, no, you have to update Windows, too. If you update Windows, update Photoshop, and Wacom drivers at the same time, the portal, the netherworld opens, you're sucked in, You'll. It's, there's just no way to get out. It's pretty bad. It's kind of like, you know, don't feed gremlins after midnight. <laughs> Updates dump my brushes almost weekly. Yeah, I've got all my stuff, like, you know set to not do that <laughs> just, just never unless i tell it to and even then um yeah i try not to do that very often people probably think i'm kidding i'm not kidding <laughs> i really don't fix what's yeah don't fix what's uh not broken there you go You're right about updates. Last time I updated HBO Max, and maybe log out. I don't know. <laughs> you don't know your password. Yeah, I don't. Uh, yeah, all that's that's always rough. Mm, I need to make this leg looks like it's going further back, so I'm gonna get rid of all that stuff I just sort of threw in there just then. <clears throat> This is a weird, weird color. I'm probably going to change that. Sometimes you just need detail for like the sake of detail and your brain will go look at all that detail he did and it's just noise <laughs> Which is basically what I just did right there I know I've brought this up on streams many times, but there, there's a uh, there's an old uh, I Say old I remember how old uh, The first Hellboy Movie Uh, they hired Drew Struzan to draw one of them, or paint one of them, and and they, he made an instructional video on it. And I learned so much from that. Like, there's tricks that I use all the time that I learned, picked up in that video. And that when one of them was the fact that, uh, like, he he just started by just like introducing uh, a bunch of texture, like with nothing but. Uh, what do you call it? Um, he used ink on a on a toothbrush, and just like on all the like almost almost all the major services except for like it wasn't that bad not, not a whole lot on the faces like everything else it was just he had this like speckled ink everywhere and I was and it, it kind of looks weird like, but the second that he added it, 
it's like all of a sudden the rocks got way more complex and the, the leather you would swear had a leather texture to it like you know like and obviously it didn't <laughs> but it, it, it did such a that noise your brain goes look at all that detail and i still to this day i i, I think about that when when you need uh, something a little detailed sometimes just noise will help <laughs> If you don't know what else to do anyway. All right, this guy had glowing stuff, I think. I think he did. We're not quite that bright. Everything on this is red, so I can't just make it red. Um, whoops. This is a layer on top of the inks. Excuse me. Um, I'm going to actually expand that a few pixels, like five pixels maybe. Yeah. Fill it with a color. And then we'll uh, we'll blur that. I right, gotta deselect it first. Deselect it and then blur. I should have an action for this. Why is it not boring? Oh, because it's a jillion pixels uh, across and tall. Yeah. Wait, why is it doing that? <laughs> there we go. Clip apparently has some cloud backup for brushes in the whole workspace. It does. Yeah, that's another reason why I like it. <clears throat> The noise tricks sound interesting and makes sense. Yeah, like that's why like on a, and I've, I've noticed this on a lot of books that, uh, not a lot, but uh, a lot of books that are colored without a ton of rendering, like with, well, you know, that are pretty flat. I've noticed there's a lot of colorists that will, you know, like me, that'll throw a, just a, you know, like a, a, a paper texture or some kind of texture over the top. Um, and it really it does wonders like it really does as long as it's not overcooked uh, textures are often overcooked <laughs> when at least at least when you're starting out and and uh I was going to say everybody texture when I first tried. Yeah, and and if you're, I mean, most people are probably not new here, but um, uh, the reason I say that, though, is because in my position as a uh, uh, colorist slash YouTuber uh, and on my Discord, um, I, I, I do feedback for, for people there, and, and, uh, and I, get, I get asked to do a lot more than I'm able to do by others, emails and comments and everything else. So I, I see a lot of uh, beginner colorist stuff. And and uh, and 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 I I did all the same. I made a lot of the same mistakes. But one of them, one of those things is 
is just overdoing textures is super popular. <laughs> it's like the second someone figures out how to do texture, just like, oh, I, I should put this everywhere. It's like, nah, 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 you don't have to do it everywhere. It's one of those things that can just easily screw up a a good drawing is just overdoing something like that. <clears throat> I was worried that I might have to change her color from being, and I still might. If it's too blue, but having him also be cool over here sort of helps to offset that. And I think some of this is going to have some cool colors on on it, and so, or cool coolish anyway. Kind of like blending modes, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And airbrush tools <laughs> yeah yeah you, you guys are basically going down the list of of all of those uh, videos i made forever ago i hadn't made one in a while of how not to color like every single one of those was strictly because <laughs> it was stuff i used to do you know it's like well i recognize this i used to do this thing also like airbrushing everything equally <laughs> I've switched over to a little texture brush for this, at least to get the, just, well, to get a little bit of texture on this guy. Um, but notice, as we're talking about texture, this is almost like a good place for an actual lesson. Um, <laughs> the reason people watch your stream, Kurt, talk about coloring. Um, you really only see or perceive texture in like transitions, you know? It's like, uh, I've got an example that I bring up a lot, but it's a good example. Um, what is it called? Uh, what is it, basketball? <laughs> oh man. Uh, yeah, here it is. Copy image. Here's a, I, I don't remember, did I ever use this in a video? Does anybody, did I just talk about this on the stream? But, um, but like on this basketball, do you see how much clearly or much more clearly you can see all these dots through here than you can down here or up here? Because down here, they're in the shadow, and so there's not as much light getting to them. You're getting less detail. Here is right where the light is, it's slicing across, you know, or at a tangent to the ball. Obviously, it's going this way. But like, this is your core shadow. The light is just strafing it, like right through here, scraping it, just like that. That's probably not the right verb. So if you think about it as like, uh, trying to think of a good analogy well it'll make more sense if I explain you see on these we can actually see the light side of it and the dark side of it each one of these little pebbles you can see the light side so you're getting full contrast from light to dark all through this little section but down here you see these little points of light are becoming less and less and less and less and then they're gone you really don't see any more direct light hitting this at all 
And so that's why like a lot of anything that's heavily textured like that, you'll really see it in that right around that core shadow transition and usually a little bit more, you know, transitioning from the middle to the bright, but all of up here, it's just reflecting light, you know? And so you're not getting as much of that text. You can see it, but it's not as clear. But anyway, that's what I'm thinking about <laughs> when I'm, when I'm, uh, coloring this dude at the moment. And I'll tighten this up in a second. It's a little rough right now. <clears throat> I feel like that dragon painting you did is a good example too. Yeah, yeah, that that is a good one. I learned so much doing that little dragon head. I want to start doing more like studies. I want to do some videos and streams that are just studies. Like take a still from a movie and like break down the lighting and all that stuff. That'll be that'll be coming soon at some point. <laughs> the deadlines are not allowing me to do much video making at the moment. All right, I'm gonna switch over to my pencil now and texture this up a little bit. Since this is going to be eight feet tall, <laughs> let me make sure I don't miss anything. I would rather overdo it than underdo it. Be like, man, those that colorist really phoned it in on that poster. This dude is so gross. I love coloring. Like, I don't know. Somebody asked me a while back, like, my, my favorite things to color. Anything, like, gooey and gross is so fun. I don't know why like the blood and guts and all that stuff. I, I think it's because it's so organic. Like you can, you can kind of do what, do whatever <laughs> it's, it can all look, be very loose and fast and still work, you know? It's such a great design, though. He's disgusting. I might throw some... Oh, we're going to have some more green on these people, too. So, yeah, all right, let's say I don't want to have that only green thing on the page. Like, scarcity of a color, like, increases its... Whatever, eyeball power. <laughs> I don't think that's a technical term for it. I don't think I ever learned how to use airbrushes after I realized how bad it looked. No, um, this came up last week on the stream. Like, most new colorists that are uh, trying to use the airbrush don't realize... I'll show you real quick. It's because I had somebody ask me this, and they were like, I do... Uh, a selection of whatever and I don't know why I went out in the middle of nowhere to do that let's let's say that it's over here and I'm very quickly gonna do that and that and that all right so and you've got a color that you want to uh, you know uh, use like a cut and grad kind of style where if you cut right through the center you forgot the gradient part, <laughs> you know? So I'm gonna show this selection because I constantly hide it. But like, there's a selection. Look at where my brush is. Like my brush is actually like outside most of the selection. That's how you get the gradient part is, is you, you don't actually color through the center of it, is 
you know, you can get the, the round brush almost entirely outside of the of the selection. Now you guys see that big circle there, you know, and then you can, you know, move it in as far as you want or whatever. But uh, but that's why, that's where that, that's how you get that fade. And a lot of beginners get the airbrush and they go, cool. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't help. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't do the, do, do what you're trying to do or you, what you think you're trying to do. If that makes sense. So I want him to be, this sounds wrong, wet, but he's a swamp monster. So bog monster, sorry. I mean, he, he really prefers bog. So we got green and let's see, is that a good color? What if we go cool? I just want to, eh, no, I don't want to get, I don't want to get too away from what I'm doing. Bright yellows, that's probably fine. <laughs> you guys said moist, not me. <laughs> Each individual bump on the texture is casting its own shadow. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So again, I'm going to fo focus on his head to begin with here. Is that, oh, that's the color I wanted. Yeah, that'll work. I'll, if we have to, uh, if it doesn't fit at the end, I'll change it. But yeah, like the smaller these and thinner these little specular highlights are, the more slick the surface is going to feel. And I'm probably going to do another, we'll do another slightly brighter highlight on all of this too, I think, when I'm done. Now, I'm not just like willy-nilly filling in every little thing with one perfect specular highlight. Like, I don't like this kind of coloring. Um, focus it on what's important. And honestly, with him, what's important is his face and this hand. So I want to make sure there's plenty of contrast on the hand. But uh, everything... Uh, even the amount of where your specular highlights go, like that's a storytelling decision. Like that is a creative decision. You don't want to get too mechanical with it. It's easy to do. It's very easy to fall into that trap of like, just uh, highlight here and here and here and here. And all of a sudden there's nothing interesting about it. You know, um, like I'm actually, imagine that as he's coming toward the camera, all of the points that would, mm, how can I, this is a weird analogy you haven't tried before. Imagine there's an invisible plane between us and him. And we're pushing that pain through him. The first places that that's going to touch is where I'm putting this light right now. Does that make sense? You can imagine like it would hit his hand first you know, his head's coming forward, you know, all the little things on his head's coming out. So you can imagine that plane being pushed through him. And the closer we are to that plane is the lightest color. And then we pass through the green and then into the red. When the light is basically like straightforward like that, that's how my, that's how I do the math on that in my head anyway. Um, and I do want his shoulder to have some, you know, uh, you know, I don't want it to be only his head to stick out. That really makes sense. Excellent. But, uh, but now like the, the, the chunkiest parts of this that are, that are lit with that bright light are, you know, on his head and his hand.
but if you ever have trouble with like lighting from the front that's a good way of kind of thinking about it it took me a while to figure that out <laughs> like I did not I did not quite understand that um, when I first started coloring tilt the plane to hit the important parts first yeah there's always like obviously there's a little bit of uh, you know there's some judgment calls there and some finagling and everything else it's not entirely technically accurate or anything but uh, it's a great shortcut And I'm being very, very uh, scarce with this because, again, like I don't want the whole thing like to look like he's just shimmering. Like, but now he looks like you would not want to touch him. I think I'm going to charge you for two covers on this. Two, two eight by eight? <laughs> two eight by eight panels, Tim? <laughs> no, this is on one panel and this is on the other. I'm just realizing I would like some of these through here. We're coming along. We're coming along. This guy, I've colored more than anybody else. I th well, no, not anybody. Uh, she takes the cake for the one I've colored the most of. He's number two. <laughs> this is Will from uh, uh, End After End. Final cutoff, I think, was what, today? If you haven't asked your comic shop. Now would be a good time. <laughs> colored her most and colored the most of her. Yeah. True. True. Big true. And uh, what I'm doing, uh, I think I've explained most of what else I'm doing, but the other thing I'm doing is I'm just hitting the letter C to uh, switch to the transparency. So you'll see me do that to like, I'll make a mark and then you see it disappear. I'm just hitting C, which toggles the color and the transparency, um, which I found out, uh, I found out today watching some YouTube videos on it that, um, but again, Adobe Fresco has the ability to paint with transparency as a default option now. It may have always been there, but I didn't notice it before. But uh, I'm thinking that that uh, app is going to be worth checking out here. Great face, another great face. The art, not mine, not mine. <laughs> I just realized that's a great face I colored there. No, I meant uh, I really like Drew's faces. I mean, not Drew, um, Nathan's face.
questions, comments, concerns. Got a few more people coming in here. How's everybody doing tonight? Hope everybody's doing good. Hey, Tom McCart, how's it going? I try to shake, shake the, the shut. Sh <laughs> I was messed up. Shake the chat awake is what I was trying to say. I almost messed that one up. No, you guys feel free to lurk. I'm, I'm, I'm a lurker most of the time. I got no problem with lurkers. But yeah, if you have questions about anything, just hit me up. Let me know. Also, pro tip. Don't go too nuts with teeth. Like, don't try to separate them all. You know what I mean? And do, like, individual teeth. It'll look weird. Most of the time, it looks weird. <laughs> Having a time drawing along. Yeah, I, I do have a lot of people at work work during my streams. I think it's awesome. So, <laughs> excuse me. Don't go nuts with teeth, Kurt Wisdom. <laughs> I just mean like, I mean, I hope that was clear, but if it wasn't, what, what I mean is like going in like highlight shadow, highlight shadow, like on teeth, it'll look weird. It just, it won't, it'll look weird. <laughs> uh, I mean, unless it's one of those really detailed things, then yeah, sure, I guess go crazy. But, uh, but nah, man, I'm not a, not a fan of that look. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is another one I think I'm going to go ahead and do like another layer of like specular type highlights on him because uh, he's a skull and skulls are kind of shiny All of my cools are drifting into green uh, as I've started this, and I that totally makes sense. But <laughs> um, because they're compliments and they look good together, but I didn't really, I don't even think I even consciously thought about that this time for once. But yeah, if you want like eyeball magnetism, you can't beat a good old complementary color scheme. I noticed that in Stray, in that video game, a lot of the calmer scenes, they used very uh, analogous type palettes, you know? So it'll have like, uh, let me get rid of my basketball for a second. Oh, that's bright. Um, you'll end up with color schemes that are that are very much like within the same little area of the color wheel or pretty close to it anyway. And then when you get to the uh, you know more bombastic scenes and stuff, you'll start seeing a lot more reds again, reds and greens or oranges and purples and those kind of stuff. It's it's a pretty um, it's a pretty common trick. It definitely works. Probably gonna change this color. It feels a little weird. Do I have any other things that color? No. Oh, 
did I do that on, where did I do that? You know what? Is all of that on? Yeah, that was all normal mode. I didn't realize that I had done that. Hey, looks bony now these things are like look super slick out of the like they came out of an anime so I want to do these that way we're gonna do real clean lines on this The mother color in this piece is not red and the same grayish blue. Mother color is is, is not red. Uh no, it's definitely red. Um But no, yeah, this would be more of like I I would if you yeah, as a mother color, I would definitely call the mother color on this red. How are we doing? 220. I know there's not a ton left on this, but this is about as long as I can sit here at this time of the night after sitting here most of the day also. So uh, I will uh, I will finish this up probably tomorrow evening at some point, I think. Uh, this seems like fun, doing different coloring styles in the same giant piece. Yeah, like I... It, it should feel similar enough but um i i do like the idea like you know vault's books all have such as personalities go they're all incredibly different um you know and just the way the books look and feel and all of that stuff is uh is is all pretty unique and and they don't really feel much like uh much like each other but of course like you want them to uh feel cohesive here you know and so i'm using a similar the same color palette but slightly adjusting for uh you know like the the tone i guess of, of all of each one of these characters is what i'm trying to say but uh, sorry, I just saw that face that really needed that in that moment. <laughs> but yeah. Um, I'm digging it so far. I'm digging it. And... Uh, Yeah, good stopping point. But yeah, thanks to everybody for watching. Uh, click a button, like, subscribe, bell, join. There's a thanks button down there. Now I got a tip on a comment the other day. Did you know that was a thing? I didn't know that was a thing. Somebody commented on one of the videos. Click thanks, and I got like something. I don't know, I don't know a few pesos or something. Um, so yeah, there's another button. We got it. You're gonna start hearing people talk about that now. <laughs> Just click a button. 
And uh, anyway, I will see y'all uh, in the next stream. Uh, thanks again for watching. Take care of yourselves. And uh, we'll do this again soon. Send me Wednesday. Yes, I'll be back. Thank you for reminding me to, to remind people <laughs> that I stream every Wednesday, uh, 10 o'clock Central AM, 11 Eastern. Again, that's AM on Wednesday. Y'all know that. See y'all in the next one. Take care.